thanks for coming, and thanks for choosing this one. There's been a lot of noise about what GDPR is, particularly in the tech world, and there are a lot of products around. And one of our key roles at IntelliJ is to identify important trends, to guide customers in the use of technology. But this isn't just about tech. So what is GDPR? Now let's not play it down. This is a cultural shift. The fundamental change is that companies and organizations will not be seen to own personal data. Any data that can personally identify an individual will belong to that individual. So companies and organizations become the custodians, and this puts the power into the hands of the individual. At any point in time, there can be a request. What data of mine do you have? So where is your employee data stored? Where's your customer data stored? Is it in an Excel file, in a database, in CRM? Is all of it there? And what's been exported? What's been emailed? Do you have any, any of your company mobile devices? And then what's your bring your own device policy? You can start to see the scale of the issue as this stacks up. So what are the risks? Well, I'm going to pause at the, as there's an elephant in the room, and that's Brexit. Do you even need to worry? This is EU le reg legislation after all. Now these are uncertain times, but this is not uncertain. UK law is well out of date. Social media and cloud were not taken into consideration in any way at all. And this is good legislation. It's well written. It's lean. And it's being written into UK law right now. And if the data relates to an EU citizen, or even if you want to do business in the EU, you must comply. Besides, this comes to force in May 2018. Britain will still be an EU member. So yes, this is happening. Now the risks. The focus is on two things broadly. First is loss of data, and that can either be theft or deletion, and it's being written into UK law as both. The other one is failure to comply with requests for information, with the right to be forgotten, and individuals can bring claims now. Now this will take a little while to bed in, and the exact enforcement is a bit debat debatable, but examples will be made and the risks are high. So there are very large fines, 20 million euros, or 4% of your global gross revenue, and the ability to name and shame. So that loss of reputation could be particularly valuable. Now this is a board level risk. Business leaders need to make sure that they're aware and that they have a clear data protection policy and a named data protection officer. That data protection officer is gonna be responsible for ensuring that impact assessments are taking place and that's on everything, on staff, processes, and systems. Ensuring that all staff are trained on how to interact with personal data, and making sure they're involved in all change management going forward and assessing the data protection risks. So now is the time to get your house in order. And this is where it is about tech. So first you need to make sure you can identify all this data. Then you need to make sure you can control access, and you need to make sure it's protected. And finally, you need to be able to report on it. And this is not a one-time thing. It's going to be reviewed and tested over and over again. We've been a Microsoft Gold Partner for many years. And our focus is on Microsoft on SharePoint as a glue. And with Office 365, this experience is particularly valuable. The nature of collaboration is that it needs to be, or it needs to at least appear to be open to end users so that they're going to adopt it. And so you need solutions in place to control, and we've selected the vital ones for GDPR. Term set to identify personal data, and metalogics to control. Now I'm going to pass over to Brendan now at Term set to show you how that starts to fit together. Thank you, Liam. Thanks so much. Um, good afternoon. Thanks for making some time for us today. Uh, my name is Brendan Clark. I'm the head of product at a company called Termset, who you may not have heard of. Um, we've spent the last three years building a platform that really focuses on identifying information inside your documents. Um, as Liam rightly says, the very first step on the GDPR journey, or frankly any journey where you care about sensitive information, PII, personal identifiable information, or, or any other types of information that you either need to discover prior to a migration or understand what you have within a corpus of your information, either in file shares or SharePoint. This identification phase is really key to that. 
as I mentioned, we've spent three years building a platform which has a very different approach to solving this problem. So traditionally when it's come to e-discovery and compliance, there's, there's always been two challenges. Uh, one might be we need every document or every piece of content you have that relates to a particular person or organization or entity. Um, and traditionally that's been a search-based approach. So you could put in the name of an organization or a person and you may or may not find some information in that way. Um, that's oftentimes very expensive, time-consuming and quite manual. Um, there's a, a more complex scenario that GDPR brings to bear and actually we should all be aware of when we're storing uh, information digitally and that is could you answer today um, what can you tell me all documents that contain people's names or bank account details or credit card numbers or anything that could be identified back to an individual the difference with that second example there is in the first example we knew what we were looking for in the second example um, we know what type of information we're looking for um, but really we don't we'd have to create a kind of dictionary of every person's name or every company to do that search um, it's interesting when we think about um, so how would you solve that problem if you had all the time and resources in the world um, let's say we had a hundred pieces of white paper and I said, could you tell me everybody's names that were on those documents? Um, you wouldn't say to me, well, you need to give me a list of names and then I'll, I'll find them in the document. And that's because ever since we learned to read, we can recognize people's names. And the same with company names and addresses. So we're taught from a very early age to be able to, pretty much the same time we learn to read, we learn uh, what we call semantic clues, so we understand context of information. So um, if I, my five-year-old son, if he read a sentence that said uh, the Albert Hall was built in 1912 um, and it's on the edge of Hyde Park, um, he would instinctively know that the Albert Hall isn't the name of a person, it's a building. Uh, equally, if, if it said Albert Hall had three children, was born in 1318, and his mother was called Gertrude, all of those clues would tell us that's a person. And that's actually been a very difficult problem for computers to solve until fairly recently. So there's a, a still relatively nascent form of artificial intelligence called natural language processing. And, and natural language processing focuses on this problem of how can we get machines to read our documents and understand the information inside them. Um, Termset's very much built on this engine. So we have a technology called named entity extraction. Um, and it's a really interesting to, to see run. So we've read now over 5,000 times the corpus of Wikipedia. So we've read several billion documents and we've trained, just like we teach our children to read, we've trained our engine to recognize information. So um, we may have uh, 15,000 documents, we'll say find all the people's names in this, um, we feed it through our engine and effectively we mark the homework. You, that was right, that was wrong and you missed those ones. If you do that many hundreds of thousands of times that we have, you have an engine that doesn't have a list of people's names but it's learned um, in a machine learning sense, a deep learning sense, how to recognize people's names. And we've done that for over 400 types of information. And this is critical for something like GDPR because frankly, a lot of the customers we work with, when we get into the bones of their information, they don't know what they have. And that's a, a combination of legacy migrations, acquisitions, all sorts of information. So they can't provide a list of customers' names, people, locations. They need us to tell them that. And that's exactly what our, our platform can do. This is how Termset sees a, a document. And so we've got a piece of white paper here. Um, and it's just a normal letter and you could obviously you're going to have millions of different types of information within uh, your environment um, when we read a document like this we're able to do what we call named entity extraction and that's really um, allowing us to identify uh, entities or things within the document themselves um, that allows us 
to begin to categorize. So the moment we look at this document, we can see um, straight away we have an address over here. Uh, right below that, we have a phone number. We have another address. We've got the name of a city. We've got a name of a company here. And this is a good example. So Arnold Associates, if you and I were to read that, we could clearly see that's the name of a company. It's not a person, even though Arnold is a name and Associates could be a surname. In the context of this document, it's clearly a company. Um, We've got a salary here, and again, we're using those semantic clues to enable us to determine that that may be a piece of sensitive information. It's prefixed with the word salary, and it's got a currency to it, and it's a figure that makes sense to that. And again, we, at the bottom here, we've identified a person, so we've been able to pull out a person's name without having to maintain a list of people's names or any of those areas. So TermSet is this semantic engine that's utilizing some of those newer technologies that allow us to identify key entities within your corpus of information regardless of where they are and here are just a, a few of the options and how our customers tend to use this so first of all you have two options on how you can use term set um, one is you can literally be running this in a few minutes after you've engaged um, with ourselves in IntelliJ because we offer a cloud service so we can connect to your information sources and all of the infrastructure sits on our side. We can securely read your information and pull out all of that information without any additional hardware or software or bandwidth or any of those constraints. Um, if you can't do that for one reason or another. We have a local installation which will deliver very similar results. Um, takes a bit more time. Um, there's a few more considerations because our cloud service is very powerful today. It's, um, it's a, a huge uh, piece of infrastructure, as you can imagine. E each of these models where we've read, um, in some cases, over three and a half billion documents, we have a model that recognizes those pieces. That, that has some infrastructure associated to it. But we can read from your file shares, we can read SharePoint Online, and we can connect to SharePoint Server, be it 2013 or 2016. And we can read pretty much any type of document that you'll have which will contain information. Um, so I'm sure you're aware if you read most of the analyst studies and the Gartners and the IDCs of the world, that they'll say a, a typical organization between 80 and 90 percent of information in an organization is actually in unstructured data. So people tend to focus on that 5 to 10 percent of structured data, or our CRMs and our databases, because they're easy to report on, they're easy to understand, but actually we know instinctively that actually all of the real information um, in a moving organization happens in the office documents, the PDFs, the emails that we all exchange. Um, that's where the bulk of um, our collaboration happens um, and also where a lot of this sensitive information will reside. Um, so we can read all of those types of information and, and many more. I've not listed them all in, in this case. Um, and we have three ways of identifying the types of data that you have in there. The most powerful is this natural language processing engine. As I mentioned, that's ready to go. It's what's called pre-trained. So you don't need to um, give us lots of samples of information, tell us what things look like. When we hit your documents, we'll immediately tell you what are inside them. So we can tell you what languages they're written in. We can tell you over 400 types of entity are inside those. So everything from people's names, companies, organizations, we have over 30 entities just relating to location, um, all the way down to things like names of universities and airports and everything in between. Um, we also have a, a very simple but powerful piece of technology within the engine that we call pattern matching, and that, that has two options. Um, one is you can describe to us things like and what does a customer reference number look like, or a social security number, um, or anything else that you can describe in a way. Um, the moment you feed that into our engine, when we encounter those, we build a taxonomy and, and we will record that information for you. Um, 
Moreover, if you have particular types of documents that do contain some sort of structure, so um, a purchase order may have a PO number on a grand total, uh, a patient record number may have particular pieces. If there's something that we can look for, you can tell us, and again, we'll be able to um, extract that information and, and use that. And finally, when it comes to pulling information out, you can also give us those taxonomies. So you can give us lists of terms and they can be hierarchical, they can have synonyms, they can be multilingual, where you can say, actually, this is data that we want to know um, if our documents contain that. So it could be document sensitivity, it could be secret, top secret, um, it could be blood groups for patients, um, it could be anything you wish. So you can give us sets of terms in taxonomies or hierarchies, um, we can absorb those, um, and our technology is able to look inside your documents um, and enact on that information. And finally for me, the outputs of that are, are twofold really. Um, I'll go to the second one first on my slide. So. The first thing we do traditionally is we actually enrich in SharePoint the documents with that metadata. So metadata is just data about your data. So if we can take a document and enrich that with further fields of information. So we've now got a document, it's already got the author, the created date and the size. We can now say the sensitivity, the customers that are mentioned, the products that are mentioned. Um, anything sensitive within there, we can add that as metadata. And that's really powerful to um, power enterprise search, compliance, workflow, navigation. So in SharePoint, we don't need folders, we don't need views. Enterprise search now makes a lot more sense. We're beginning to move to a almost Google-like experience where we can personalize results, we can localize results, we can allow users to refine results by the information that's contained inside those documents, not something that someone's had to manually add. Um, but probably more apposite for a GDPR conversation is we can also feed that data out into reports and into um, scriptable files effectively that will allow our friends at Metalogix, the, the best migration tool provider in the world, to intelligently um, work on that information so that when you're moving content from one place to another, they can make decisions. They can say, this should go in this place, this shouldn't be migrated, this should be quarantined. So the identification process allows us to look inside those documents um, and either enrich or report on the information inside them that allows our partner tools to control and protect and report on that information as it moves forward. So TermSec can produce those reports of GDPR information. That will allow our partners to control and protect those pieces. And TermSec can add any information that we've discovered as metadata to those documents and produce reports for that. When we produce that information that surrounds the discovery that we've just done, that identification phase, our partner Metalogix has this powerful tool set that's able to use that information to um, really produce some smart ways of controlling and reporting upon that. Uh, and with that, I'll pass that across to uh, James, who can uh, show you a little more about how that identification phase can move on. Thanks, Rondo. Thanks, James. So, hi, everyone. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Fowl. I'm partner manager with Metalogix. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Metalogix, we're an ISB that specialise in providing solutions to help move, manage and protect uh, your content within collaboration platforms uh, such as SharePoint and Office 365. Uh, this section of the webinar is going to be focused around how you can make sure that your data is actually protected and secure and compliant ready for the changes that are coming next year uh, around GDPR. Um, I've got four parts. So firstly, uh, look at what you can do now to really review your current systems and data. Um, I'll then talk a bit about this concept of secure migration. Uh, following that, we'll look at what tools you have out of the box with SharePoint and Office 365. And then finally, I'll talk about what Metalogix are doing uh, specifically around this particular area and our solutions for helping uh, security and information governance and also a little bit around migration. 
But let's start with kind of reviewing your systems and data. So this is really about ensuring that you have policies, uh, procedures, and uh, you're complying with GDPR. And it's really about just taking stock of your current platforms and asking yourselves a few questions. Uh, for example, do you know where you have content for customer data located? Where are those servers? Where are those collaboration platforms? Uh, what is your current policy, indeed if you have one, for informing customers of a data breach, uh, which will be something that will be kind of enforced next year? Um, how do you back up and encrypt your data? Are you outsourcing any of the data management to third parties? Uh, if you are, then those third parties are also going to have to comply with the new regulations. And finally, would you be able to locate and delete all that data relating to one of your customers under what's called the right to be forgotten clause. So if you're struggling to answer any of these questions, it's essential that you implement a plan to ensure your business is compliant with the changes to kind of the GDPR. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to show that combining intelligence, intelligence knowledge and expertise in this area uh, with term set solutions that you saw for discovering and classifying content and adding our solutions from Metalogics for moving and securing content, hopefully you'll be kind of ready for those changes that are going to be coming next year. So let me talk about this concept of uh, secure migration. Um, so what is secure migration? It's really about being able to kind of move and transfer content to the right place. Uh, and by the right place, that means kind of where you've got the correct access control, the correct users have the relevant access to that particular content. So this could be when you're moving platforms. So a lot of our work is when customers are moving from maybe legacy platforms, maybe they're moving file shares into Office 365, or they have an old version of SharePoint that's going on into SharePoint 2016 or SharePoint Online. Um, or it could be that you're performing a, an inventory of your current environment. Um, and then based on that, you're reorganizing content into the appropriate places. So uh, essentially, secure migration is a, a better and a more considered approach to your typical lift and shift type migration, which you could kind of consider a blind migration because you're not really understanding what is in that content. You're just moving it across into the, the next platform. And so why is secure migration important? Well, you heard from Liam at the beginning about the fines that are going to be enforced for those organizations that don't comply to GDPR. Um, fairly significant numbers there, but it isn't just about the financial impacts um, that you'll see. Um, there's also maybe uh, potential concerns around uh, competition, uh, particularly if you're using or storing content that is your company's IP, new product launches, highly sensitive business critical information inside SharePoint or Office 365. It's obviously important to secure that content and prevent that from getting into the wrong hands. And there's also the impact of reputation. If you're not managing uh, sensitive and uh, highly sensitive data correctly, uh, what are the dangers of that uh, uh, that content getting into your uh, the wrong hands? Uh, reputations are built up over many years and can be lost uh, in minutes with a data breach. Uh, and finally, um, if you do uh, experience a data breach, um, there's going to be a lot of time involved in kind of handling that uh, time that I'm sure you'd rather be doing uh, spending elsewhere. Um, so talk about kind of the destination of files. So this is really about understanding kind of where content should sit. What's the appropriate location based on kind of how sensitive that content is, um, how important that information is to your business. And this isn't just a, a Microsoft story. We're seeing a lot of organizations embracing other collaboration platforms such as Box and Google and Dropbox in various areas of your business. Um, so it's really about making sure that users are storing that content in the appropriate platform. They're sharing content uh, that isn't business critical with third parties outside the organization. Maybe a, a simple cloud uh, storage provider um, is appropriate for that. Um, certainly if they're sharing uh, business and confidential information with third party partners, you're going to want to secure that. Um, so if they're sharing that through Office 365, you want to make sure that they're obviously securing the, the, the permissions and the access to that particular content. And then if you're running SharePoint on-prem, that's maybe a place for storing kind of highly sensitive content. 
take it a step further and customer PII data, well, that could be in Office 365, or it could be in SharePoint, but it needs to go into the correct place. So a secure site that's locked down with the correct permissions. So let's talk about uh, kind of this secure migration methodology. So this is really the, the steps that you need to take uh, to ensure that you're doing that. And it's certainly where IntelliJ can assist by combining their knowledge kind of in this field uh, with term set solutions uh, and metalogics for classifying, moving, and securing that content. So the first step in this is kind of just agreeing what sensitive content is. Obviously, we've got the personal identifiable information to, to secure, but it goes beyond that. It's looking at what other sensitive content may be important to your business. This is certainly where term sets kind of uh, solution can help to classify that in an automated manner. If you're dealing with uh, potentially terabytes of data, it's certainly not something that you want to take on as a manual task. The more automation you can put in there, uh, the more time you're going to uh, to save. Uh, once you've kind of classified that content, you can then start to decide where the content should actually reside. Uh, again, if that's removing platforms or just reorganizing your current uh, collaboration platform, then this is where Metalogics and our solutions can, uh, can play. So firstly, being able to migrate that content. Based on those rules, again, automatically, uh, and saving a lot of time. And then once, once it's in that location, providing the ongoing security uh, and information management tools to, to prevent on an ongoing basis that content is secure uh, and the users have the correct access to that content. Um, for migration purposes, our solution um, we have is Content Matrix. Uh, so this is a solution that can help with migrating and organizing content um, inside SharePoint and SharePoint Online. It has a number of different source environments that we can pull data on. So it isn't just SharePoint. We can pull data in from things like file shares, blogs, wiki providers, and some other connectors as well. And then moving that into um, either SharePoint on-prem, uh, SharePoint online, or even other areas of Office 365, such as kind of one, one drive for business. Uh, the strength of the solution is really its ability to manipulate content on the fly. So as you're moving it from A to B, be able to grab that content and uh, kind of ma manipulate, maybe retain uh, metadata or change metadata, uh, switch permissions, uh, make sure you're kind of moving all the workflows across that you've built. Uh, so Content Matrix has a lot of flexibility in that respect. We have a concept called transformers that really allow uh, you to kind of grab that content and uh, change it on the fly. IntelliJ specifically have a lot of experience in kind of using content matrix and undertaking kind of large complex migrations and content matrix is really underpinning that. It's the engine that drives content from kind of source to target. Now if we add term set kind of into the mix, this is how we can then kind of uh, automate a secure and intelligent migration. Uh, so with term sets classification output, if you like, uh, content matrix can then grab that, pick it up, uh, and then automatically move or migrate that to the correct location. So if we scan SharePoint for PII, we can migrate this content to the correct secure area in your new platform. And again, with intelligence experience of both companies and both solutions, they're able to kind of orchestrate that seamlessly uh, through the project. Let's quickly talk about kind of what tools you have out of the box uh, with SharePoint and SharePoint Online uh, before we get into kind of our solutions for security compliance and information governance. Um, so in terms of out of the box capabilities, um, it's fair to say that the, sh the features that SharePoint provides uh, don't really give you the adequate level of security needed to conform to GDPR. If you've got a large SharePoint environment, Staying on top of PI, or personal identifying information, knowing where it is, um, locating it, securing it is certainly a growing challenge. And in many cases, business users unknowingly store sensitive content within SharePoint and then fail to take the steps in securing that data. So it becomes kind of exposed to people that shouldn't kind of get access to that. When it comes to GDPR specifically, um, if you look at the wheel, it's really points one, two, and four, I'd say, that are the main concern. Firstly, fragmented permissions management. Uh, you don't really have the, the tools out of the box to really manage permissions um, at a, a platform level. 
So how can you identify what that person has access to? How can you revoke their rights um, quickly and easily uh, without having to do any kind of scripting or a lot of time consuming and manual processes? Uh, number two, they're limiting, lim limited auditing. So yes, there are some auditing capabilities, but again, it's not really enterprise level auditing. Uh, again, can you select a user and find everything that they've done across your SharePoint and Office 365 platform? Certainly not very easily with the, the tools out of the box. And then number four, the limited governance policy enforcement. Um, so there, there are no real governance policies that you can force across the SharePoint and Office 365 platform. So when it comes to the out-of-the-box administration tools, there's really the, what we call the three suspects, uh, central administration for doing kind of more server side and application side kind of security management, doesn't so really get into the content. You then have site settings, so on each particular team site, project site, you're going to have access to the uh, the permissions and be able to maintain and manage the permissions at a site level, uh, but it is on a site-by-site -site basis. And thirdly, um, if you have the skills or your, your platform owners have the skills, then maybe you could use PowerShell. But again, it's a bit cumbersome. It's not a, certainly a seamless way to manage permissions inside SharePoint. Um, at a site level, uh, when we're going into kind of manage the permissions, uh, yes, we can look at a user, see what, what they have access to in that particular site. Uh, we can do some uh, kind of basic reporting there. Uh, we can look, look at things like broken inheritance and where documents maybe have some direct permissions associated. But it is very much a site by site or list by list process, which can be very time consuming. When we come to auditing inside SharePoint, again, yes, we have the audit reports. Um, but again, kind of running those across any wider scope is, is quite tricky. Uh, when you do run an audit report, you're having to export that up, out into Excel and manipulate the data. Uh, so it's not a quick and easy way to go in and just look at a user, audit them, see who's accessed a document, uh, see who's changed or deleted a document. Uh, there's a lot of steps there to get to the information that you need to. Uh, SharePoint 2016 has obviously come a long way, so Microsoft have invested a lot of time um, and energy in developing the security and governance, uh, but it's still not really sufficient for full kind of data loss prevention. Um, yes, they do provide some capabilities there, uh, but I think importantly at the bottom there, you can't manage security across kind of multiple SharePoint deployments. Um, again, that central console is certainly a lacking, lacking point on, on SharePoint uh, as a whole. So how can Metalogics kind of help in this particular area? Um, and how can we make kind of GDPR compliance easy? So the first point is about actually demonstrating that, demonstrating that you have the compliance um, and what can you do there with our solutions. So the changes, the GDPR will place far greater responsibility um, on organizations to prove that they're actually managing PI of customers in a responsible and kind of transparent manner. So our solution control point um, has all the auditing, auditing capabilities, governance policies that will help you actually produce audit reports quickly, easily, uh, with kind of real granularity in its detail. So you can go and check that user and find everything that they've accessed inside the platform. Um, secondly, uh, being able to isolate and remove policy violating files. So again, control point allows your organizations to kind of flag content containing personal identifiable information, so think of like national insurance numbers, for example, and then quarantine them until they've actually been approved by a designated content reviewer, therefore avoiding the chance of that, kind of, that content getting into a, an unsecure location. Now, the solution also provides a single console and instantly available, um, so certainly for your data protection officer, they can use that for an instant overview of how data is stored across all your kind of SharePoint uh, platform, meaning that you comply with GDPR becomes much easier. One person will have a single overview of all the activity um, across your systems. Um, and then fourthly, ensuring governance strategies are followed. So ideally, employees will be aware of these implications. Certainly, you need to start kind of making people aware of the changes to GDPR inside the organization. 
Um, and hopefully they will follow the rules that you put out by the book. But we all know what users will do uh, or, or what they won't do. Um, so you can't guarantee that that will be the case. With Metalogic's control point, it allows you to implement things like custom workflows to force your employees to comply with policies whenever, for example, uploading data that incl uh, includes PII. So the Metalogic's control point um, is certainly critical for data protection officers, um, gives them the ability to discover secure um, content, um, and that's really the foundation of any information security strategy. Uh, so once the regulations come into force, Control Point can maintain the security of customer data, um, ensuring that your organization complies both kind of now and also then moving forward. So specifically, it gives you those audit uh, capabilities, uh, and you can report across all elements of the SharePoint uh, configuration um, and user activity. So checking that user, seeing what they do have access to and what they've actually gone into. Um, distributing out security and governance capabilities to site owners. Um, so quite often within an organization, there's, no, there's not a central team that are managing SharePoint. There'll be individual project owners, business owners, uh, managers of departments that will actually be responsible for, ma for maintaining access to sites and content. So with Control Point, you can give them the tools to manage their own, their own content, but as a central platform over, owner or data and the protection officer, they can actually see across the entire um, estate what is actually happening. And it gives you the tools to then manage permissions at a, a kind of a platform level, or right down to individual item and user level. Um, it will give you the uh, policies that you can enforce um, across the platform. Um, and an interesting thing we've released uh, fairly recently is uh, something we call Sentinel. So this is actually allowing you to monitor um, unusual uh, user behavior. So when that person maybe goes into SharePoint or SharePoint Online and starts downloading thousands of documents, uh, we're able to kind of intercept that, intercept that mm -hmm. and then apply some controls on that particular action. So Control Point provides a range of auditing, reporting, and management capabilities, um, really at the single easy click of a button. Uh, we also provide scheduling and alerting capabilities, so your DPO they have access to all the necessary information delivered to them in their inbox around PII and sensitive content, and ensuring that they're aware of how this content is being managed and protected. So Control Point and Content Matrix that I've just talked about, they're part of a suite of solutions from Metalogix uh, that really allow organizations to move, manage, and protect content within your collaboration platforms. So with that, I'd like to pass now back to Andrew to We'll wrap up. Thank you, James. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Tomlins. I'm the commercial director here at Intelligy. Uh, I'd just like to, to wrap up the session today. I appreciate we're running slightly late, so I'll try and compress what I've got to say into a relatively short amount of time. Um, we've obviously heard a lot about GDPR and some of the tools available to the share, uh, users um, of SharePoint, but, but why Intelligy? Well, we are, we're a leading UK gold partner. Um, specializing in, in enterprise content management solutions based on, on SharePoint Online and, and SharePoint Server. But we also have a very deep uh, experience across all the tools mentioned today, uh, and that's quite a unique property amongst the, the Microsoft partners. And we can help integrate some of those uh, data sets between, between the two systems, so term set moving to Metalogix, as you heard earlier from, from James. We also have uh, a, a wide-ranging professional services division, which can offer a complete project lifecycle service, and that, that includes um, cert Microsoft certified engineers, project management office, um, and analysts, QA, and an entire support division as well. And lastly, this is probably one of the most important points, we have close links with a GDPR practitioner uh, and have partnerships with with those people that can help your DPO with their strategy. That's going to be key for um, devising the right approach to, to getting to GDPR compliance. So can we promise to make you 100% GDPR compliant? Well, no. This, this is more than just technology. Um, but can we support your efforts to get there? Absolutely. 
So the company is at various stages of the, of the compliance. We have a number of very key services that I've just mentioned earlier uh, um, that can help offer your DPOs with some assistance. And we have a raft of skills and experts and tools in the most common data repositories in, in the world in terms of SharePoint usage. So just to summarize the, the points you've heard um, so far this afternoon, it's really about um, identifying the data. So this first step is going to be about the GDPR readiness assessment. Um, together with our, our practitioner partner, we are going to be able to help you as part of that process identify your data. Uh, and TermSet has been um, proven to be excellent. It's a, it's a really fantastic tool. It's very, very cool in do, indeed. Um, the control. Once you've identified your sensitive data and your policies, you need to be able to handle it properly. And mapping its its flow is key to the design of the system that supports your policies. So IntelliJ can uh, have consultants can either create tailored SharePoint solutions to cater for these flows, or or even deploy tools such as Control Point to deal with all, all the data across your farm. Sometimes your data will not reside in SharePoint or in in the most compliant version of SharePoint, and data data migration is going to be important. So incorporating term sets to identify some of the metadata as to how you should deal with it, and methodologies to apply the policies, and uh, move that data using content matrix, which is again something we have deep experience of, is, is something we can provide. Um, last point on the control area there is information architecture. Obviously SharePoint uh, is, is something that needs to be architected, you need to think carefully about how your data should be residing, and we'll help you support, put policies in place and something to support your governance, your sensitive data, sensitive data and provide a foundation for any plans in your SharePoint repositories. Within the protect area, we'll obviously be able to assist with um, helping you with the ongoing platform and application support. We have a range of different service level agreements for organizations that need platform assurance during a sort of business as usual scenario. And ongoing reporting. So finally, continuous monitoring is vital for demonstrating compliance. And we can help devise the reports and help your administrators keep one step ahead of those, those auditors. So what are the next steps? Um, well, we'd like to offer you a, a 30 minute consultancy session with uh, two of the leading resources from IntelliJ. So that would be a, a GDPR practitioner, Matt Anslow. Um, somebody you can look up on LinkedIn as being someone who posts regularly about GDPR. Um, and one of our senior technical consultants as well. We're going to make this offer available for 14 days. Um, but please do feel free to sign up to it, and we'll, we'll send out links to, to uh, enable you to do that shortly after this session. So, if you have any further questions or any comments, um, we, so we will be sending out a survey briefly after this. This is just a very brief four-question four survey. Um, if you wish to come back to us directly, please do feel free to use this. this uh, it's my direct number and my email address and be delighted to have a conversation with you and sort out that 30-minute um, free session to help you get to where you need to get to. I, I don't think we've got any, have we got uh, any questions, Liam? I think we might have had one earlier. Yes, about encrypted data. So how does it handle encrypted documents, e.g. by RMS? Um, so we might just want to quickly unmute Brendan. Absolutely, so I know that Brendan has got back to Colin uh, on this question, but it might be a good one for everyone to hear. So, Brendan, are you still there? Yeah, hi, Liam. Um, yeah, so it's, it's um, a complex question, actually, unfortunately, but um, uh, d depending on, on what type of account you can provide to enable us to read that information, um, we have worked with encrypted files before, uh, but very happy to explore that offline. Really depends how you've implemented your rights management or uh, encryption properties. But uh, yeah, let me know. We'd be delighted to uh, drill into a bit more detail with you. Perfect. Thanks, Brendan. I think that's the only one we've had this afternoon, but if you do feel free to, to feed back to us uh, via the survey we're going to provide to you after this session. Um, we'll also provide a recording and some um, slide packs for you to, to reference as well. Um, but uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been, it seems to be a very well attended event, which is, which is great to see. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you in due course. <laughs>